So my name's Aaron. I work for the City of Mount Gambier in environmental sustainability, work on all different things from uh, renewable energy, solar power, to active transports, the rail trail, things like that, waste and recycling, uh, the reuse market, uh, things like that, but also on home food production. So that's why we're here. And I'll just give a bit of an outline of what we're gonna to cover tonight. So if you do have any questions as we go along, please use the Q&A function. And then I'll try and answer what I can at the end. I won't be able to do that as, as I go along, but I can answer them at the end of the webinar. So we're gonna cover where to get started with growing your own veggies and herbs. Uh, what are the easiest veggies to grow? which veggies are the quickest to harvest, which veggies practically grow themselves, what veggies can you grow in Mount Gambia right now in May and in June, and can I grow veggies if I don't have much space? Firstly, why, why grow your own veggies? So, you know, we can just go down to the shop and buy them. Well, veggies, uh, fruit and veggies, obviously very good for your health, but um, you can't get any fresher than getting something out of your own garden and eating it straight away. If you, you know, you're growing carrots, for example, go out to the garden, pick out a carrot, wash off the dirt, eat it straight away, then that's lost absolutely no nutrients at all. It's basically, basically that's still alive and you're eating it. So very good for your health to grow your own veggies, particularly if you do it organically, uh, which you, you know, if you grow your own, then you've got full control over what happens to your veggies, whether you, you use chemicals or not. I mean, it's great to grow organic. Um, also good for your mental health. So lots of studies show that getting outside is great for mental health and veggie gardening is a great way to do that. So it's a very relaxing pastime. Um, it's great to sort of just switch the mind off, get out and potter in, in the garden and you get some a reward at the end of it. So you get to eat the veggies. It's also good for the environment. So, you know, we've got food traveling all over the world from all different countries, going from here to other countries, other countries coming here and, uh, I was at a conference a number of years ago and a fellow told a story, two truck drivers. There was one going from uh, Melbourne to Brisbane, another one coming from Brisbane to Melbourne. And they sort of met halfway in New South Wales at a truck stop or something. And the fellow from Brisbane said, uh, you know, uh, to the bloke from Melbourne, what are you transporting? He said, oh, well, I've got a load of uh, chicken that I'm taking down to Melbourne. And then uh, the Melbourne fellow asked the bloke from Brisbane, well, what are you transporting? He said, well, you know what? I've got a load of chicken. I'm taking it down to Melbourne. So I just sort of highlight some of the crazy stuff that happens with our food system. When we're transporting all this food around and do we really need to? So if you can grow it right in your backyard, um, you know, that reduces all of that craziness. You can also save some money too. So, you know, a little bunch of herbs will cost $3 at the supermarket. So, you know, if you use a lot of herbs in your cooking, you can grow your own. A lot of herbs are very easy to grow. And every bunch that you pull off the, the, the herb plant, save $3. So you can actually save some money too. So where to get started? Well, what the, what the plants need? So firstly, they need light. So most veggies need, say, four to six hours of sunlight a day. So you need to choose a spot where you're going to get that. So a spot in your garden, or you can't even grow inside too. If you've got a, somewhere near a window where you're going to have you know, a reasonable amount of sunlight, you can grow inside as well. So most veggies need about four to six hours a day. You know, different vegetables uh, differ. Some will tolerate more shade than others, but generally speaking, these are general guides, about four to six hours. Obviously they also need water. So plants like to drink, just like animals and humans. So you want the, the soil to be moist, but not wet. So if you were to grab a handful of the soil and squeeze it, you don't want drips of water to be coming out, not lots of drips anyway. Uh, so you want it to be moist or damp. If you, you look at soil, you can tell when it's dry because it looks lighter and when it's damp, it's darker. So you want to, you know, have your soil to be damp. And sometimes when it rains, you know, like even like today, um, you go out to the garden and the ground's all wet, looks like wet, it's wet. But if you actually scratch the surface of your, your soil, you might see that only a centimetre or two centimetres is actually damp. So underneath the rain hasn't soaked all the way through and under that might be the dry soil, that kind of light soil. So you want your soil to be moist, but not wet. So that's a good way to do it. You just go out and scratch, scratch them away from the surface. If it looks dry, then you need to, to water them. Typically um, veggies, the roots grow down to about uh, 30 centimeters, about a foot in the ground when they're fully grown. Obviously when they're smaller, it's, it's less, but it doesn't take them very long to get down to sort of 10, 15 centimeters. And so you need to make sure obviously your water's getting down uh, to that depth. Uh, veggies obviously need 
soil as well. They need something to grow in and that's where they get their nutrients. So they need nutrients, they need food. So they get it from soil, from rich soil and from liquid fertilizer as well. And also warmth or temperature. So different veggies grow uh, at different temperatures. So some will grow better in summer and some will do better in winter. Some aren't fussed, but they are affected by the temperature. So either they, you know, say summer veggies that you can't grow them now, obviously, and other ones they'll just grow quicker when it's warmer. In terms of the soil, that's obviously a very important part of growing veggies. So they will grow in a variety of soils, a lot of, and particularly the ones that I'm going to be talking about this evening, they'll grow in a variety of different soils, unless they're kind of extreme soils. So if you've got very heavy clay soils uh, that easily get waterlogged, or if you've got very sandy soils, then they may not do that well. In Mount Gambier, I've particularly got pretty good soils in Mount Gambier and, the, and nearby surrounds, the volcanic soil. So you don't really have to do too much to them, but the more um, you can enrich the soils, the better though. So, and if you live out of town, I live in an area where there's, it's just sand, just kind of dirty sand. So I really have to make the soil and enrich it with compost and manure and things like that. The more that you can do that, the better and the better the plants will be. And it gives them that nutrients. And every time you grow veggies in a certain part of your garden, they'll take out some of those nutrients. So you gotta, you gotta put them back in. So you do that typically through compost and, and manure and enriching the soil. You can grow in pots as well, and you can either do that, you can get some soil if you've got good soil in the garden, but you just want to grow in pots or get it from somewhere else, or you can buy potting mix from local stores as well. So, so actually growing the veggies. Well, growing from seedlings is the easiest way to do it. So you just can go and buy seedlings from uh, local nurseries, from hardware stores and, and the like. And so they basically start to grow the plant for you. So you go get your little seedlings of whatever it is, lettuce, herbs, whatever, and take them home and put them in the ground. So you take them out, they'll be in a little seed tray or a little pot or something like that. So you can sort of carefully get them out. Typically you want to put your hand over it and just sort of tip it upside down and just give the, the edge of the pot or the seed tray just a little tap. And then they'll typically they'll come out easy. And then when you put them in, you obviously want to make a, a bit of a hole to put them in. And you put them in the soil and replace the soil back over the, into the hole, about up to the level that they were in the pot. So you see that where they, the soil level is, when you take it out of the pot, you want it to sort of be up to about that level as well. I often make a little um, small basin. And so particularly in summer, so that's just so when you're watering them, the water makes sure it goes down into the roots of the, the seedling of the veggies. And also when they're, they're small, I often put them uh, inside a, a cut off plastic bottle. So you can see on the pictures here, I just get a plastic bottle, cut the bottom off, um, sometimes cut the top off as well. And you put that around the veggies and that just sort of protects them a little bit from wind, but also from pests. So particularly slugs and things like that. The, the photo in the middle there where they've just left the top of the bottle as is, that can work well if it's a wide rim bottle, but sometimes if it's a narrow rim bottle, the, it's difficult to get the water in there to water them. So I'll, something like that, I'll just cut the top off as well. And so it's more like that one on the bottom left. But that's a good way just to protect your, um, your veggies as the, when they're little. You can also grow from seed. So you can buy seed packets like the one on the screen there. So uh, whatever it is, this one's onion. So you'll have the picture on the front and on the back, the, what you, how you grow the seeds. Not as quick as seedlings. So if you really want to get started, seedlings are the best way. But seeds are, have advantages over seedlings in that they, they are cheaper. So a, seed, a tray of seedlings could cost, depending on what it is, could cost, cost 10 to $15. A packet of seed could cost $3. But in a packet, you'll have 100 or more seeds. So you can obviously grow a lot more plants from uh, a pack of seeds than you can buying seedlings. And I find it more satisfying. It's really satisfying just getting the seeds and putting them in the soil or putting them in your seed tray. And then they, they sprout. And then you, they grow bigger, you put them in the garden and then, you know, a month or two or three down the track, you can eat your, eat the veggies that you've put in. So it's a very satisfying way of growing veggies from seed and you, you get more out of it basically. So you follow the directions, all the packets will have directions on the back about what time of the year to sow the seeds, how deep to sow them, how far to sow them apart and that kind of thing. So I follow the directions on the, on the packet and you can buy seed trays like the one in this, uh, the black tray in the picture there. But you can just do it anyway. You can obviously grow them straight into the ground. Um, and things like carrots and onions, typically you want to do that because they, their roots don't like being disturbed when you transplant them. But a lot of others you can grow 
in seed trays and then you've got a bit more control over their environment so things like lettuce and the like and you can also just make seed trays out of whatever you've got you've got a little plastic tub around you can turn that into a seed tray in the picture there they're old toilet rolls that they've turned into uh, seed trays and so they've grown the seedlings in there and then they can plant them straight in the garden the the toilet roll just rots away and you can leave them in situ they're the easiest veggies to grow so there's there's more than this but this is just something to get get you started so radishes extremely easy to grow uh, they germinate really well from seed they grow quickly so i'll have them on the next list as well and they're pretty hardy so they're very you know if you want to get started with veggies radishes is a great way to get started they're quick easy good veggies to grow lettuce uh, the loose leaf lettuce like oak leaf and cost and that sort of thing uh, very easy to grow. Also, you can you can pick the leaves off as they grow. So when they get a bit bigger, you pick the leaves off from the outside and they'll keep growing leaves from the inside. So you just keep uh, picking the leaves off and they'll last you for a long time. Uh, whereas something like iceberg, you actually have to take the whole lettuce, you know, cut the whole lettuce off and take it in one go. So you're basically killing the plant when you're eating it. Loose leaf lettuce, you can just keep picking it off and it will just keep giving for, for weeks. Potatoes, very easy to grow. In our climate, um, there's good potato growing area around Mount Gambier and down southwest Victoria as well. Green beans, easy to grow. Tomatoes, uh, they're you know very satisfying to grow, very easy. Zucchini, um, if you go to the fruit and veg swap, um, certain times there'll be lots of zucchinis because they're very easy to grow and yummy. Garlic, you can grow that from the garlic you get at the supermarket or the um, the produce shop. You just Get a bulb of garlic, take off the cloves and you can plant them in the ground about a, a thumb's depth and then they'll start growing and then they turn into their own bulbs. So garlic's a great way to get started, particularly if you use a lot in your cooking. And cucumber, another good veggie to grow. Which veggies are the quickest? So uh, as I mentioned, radish, you can be eating them within 30 days. You can have little radishes, so they're very quick to grow. These, um, these days on here are affected by the weather. So in warmer weather, they'll grow quicker than in the colder weather, plants will, won't grow as quick because it is colder, but they can be around about 30 days for radishes. Lettuces, uh, you can be eating little lettuces within a month or so, same with rocket. Spinach, a little bit longer. Um, bok choy and pak choy, great for stir fries in a, in a month and a half. You can be picking leaves off those. Carrots, not quite a, not quite two months. You can be eating those. Kale's about a month, month or two months if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, spring onions, about a couple of months. Veggies and herbs that practically grow themselves, and I say practically because, uh, like any plants, if you don't water them at all, then they'll probably they will die. But they're very hardy and very easy to grow. Parsley, we've got a lot of parsley in the garden, and if you just leave that go to seed. Um, you know, and even it will it will spread itself around. But even if you get a pinch of the dry seeds and spread them around your garden, then you'll end up with parsley everywhere. If you like parsley, then that's great. And they'll just keep regrowing and regrowing. And, you know, you'll just have a never ending supply of parsley, which is fantastic. Mint, very hardy. Uh, it does spread everywhere and can take over though. So you want to grow that in a large pot or in a part of the garden where it's not going to spread to the rest of the garden, if you know what I mean. But very hardy, easy to grow. Potatoes. If you grow potatoes in a particular part of your garden, they'll just keep popping up sort of year after year in that same spot because there'll be tiny little potatoes. Even if you dig them up, there'll be tiny little ones that you won't quite get and they'll, they'll grow the next year. So same if you put potatoes in your compost uh, and you spread that compost over your garden, they'll start growing wherever you put the compost. But they're very easy to grow. Um, you know, if you've got kids, they love digging, digging up the potatoes. It's like finding, finding treasure. Lettuce, uh, those kind of loose leaf varieties, if you leave them to go to seed, a bit like parsley, they'll just start popping up and grow themselves. Same with rocket. Tomatoes, if you leave them, leave some of them to fall to the ground, they'll regrow next season. Uh, where we used to live, we had some cherry tomatoes in a garden bed and we'd eat heaps off the plants, but some would fall to the ground and then they'd just grow themselves the next year. It's fantastic. A lot of herbs are easy to grow like rosemary, sage, thyme, oregano, uh, they're perennial. So you just put them in once and they just keep growing. So it's a bit like a gum tree, you know, just keeps growing, uh, where versus an annual. So you say something like parsley is an annual where it grows for a season, then it will die off. And then you just get the new, new parsley from the new plants that have come from the seed. Rosemary, sage, thyme, 
they're all perennial. So they just keep growing. So you put the rosemary in and it will just keep growing and you can keep harvesting sprigs off that for your cooking. Same with sage, thyme, oregano. The other two I wanted to mention that are a bit more obscure um, are warrigal greens and bower spinach. So warrigal greens, um, some people are starting to learn more about that now. That's a, they're both native plants. Warrigal greens is from Gippsland over in Victoria. And it's the one in the, on the top there with the sort of larger leaves. And bower spinach is its cousin, which grows right here on the limestone coast. So if you go walking on the coast, you'll often see bower spinach growing over things uh, along the ground. You can also see it around the Blue Lake. If you walk around the Blue Lake and you sort of look over the little fence, uh, you'll see bower spinach growing in, in certain spots. And both of those you can grow from cuttings, very easy to grow from cuttings. You just take a little cutting off one of these um, ones that's growing out and stick it in the ground at this time of the year, in winter and autumn and then they'll grow. So underneath, the bottom one there is the bower spinach, which has kind of smaller leaves. That Underneath that is actually a farm gate. So I took some cuttings years ago and put them in the ground under the farm gate there and I just started training them up. But once we got them going and climbing up, they just cover the whole thing. So what you do with those is you, you take the leaves, you blanch them in water for a minute or two in boiling water, and then you can use it like spinach. So very easy to grow, very hardy, uh, particularly bower spinach, um, even hardier than warrior greens. And yeah, you can use them uh, in your cooking like spinach. So what can we grow this time of year? So it's getting pretty chilly out there. Today wasn't a very good day for being in the garden, but um, you can still grow veggies in winter. And so we're just almost in winter. I've put this link on here, uh, which is the Mount Gambia and District Seed Planting Calendar. It shows you sort of a lot of the main varieties of veggies, main types of veggies on the left-hand column in the white there. And then across the top is, are the months of the year. So um, the idea is that you can look, say, go to May or June, and then you just follow the column down. And you, with the little dots are, they mean that you can grow the veggies at that time of the year. So you'll see on that calendar that we're coming into a bit of a lean time for veggie gardening uh, in winter, and you can grow a lot more in spring and summer, but you still can grow things now. So you can grow broad beans, broccoli, kale, lettuce, onion, pea, rocket, snow pea, some kinds of carrots you can also grow year round. Um, and so, yeah, so I'd highly recommend if you haven't seen that before, then you can go to the council website, uh, go to the sustainability page, food and garden page, and you'll find that calendar on there. You can also get hard copies from the library and the civic center if you are in those places anyway, but you can get it online. So that's a very handy reference um, and I use it all the time. It's also based on the knowledge of local gardeners. So it's not just generic from uh, Melbourne or somewhere else. It's actually based on knowledge of Mount Gambia gardeners. And uh, so it's all, all um, information that's suited to our region. So if you don't have much space, uh, you've got a small, don't have much of a garden or backyard or you're renting, well, you can grow veggies in pots too. So uh, they grow very well in pots, you know, particularly those ones I mentioned before, uh, lettuce, you can even grow potatoes in pots if you want, uh, the, all the herbs. You can get cheap pots from the Reus market when it's open. So it's not open at the moment, but hopefully sometime soon it'll be open again and you can get really cheap, large plastic pots. But you can turn anything into a pot really. So I've got some examples on the screen there. We've got some old uh, oil tins, uh, some plastic bottles. There's a, an old oil drum that someone's turned into a little garden bed. Basically you can turn anything into a pot. Um, you know, if you've got some old gum boots or something, you can fill them with soil and turn it into a pot. Grow, fill it with body mix soil and you're, you're good to go. Put your veggies in there. So that's a good way if, if you don't have much space. Probably the most rewarding things or, you know, the more um, value you get for your space are herbs. So you can grow some herbs in pots and then you can use those in your cooking. As I say, a little sprig of herbs can cost you $3 at the supermarket. So get a big pot, grow some rosemary or thyme or something and use it in your cooking. If you are going to get into gardening, then I highly recommend you do compost. So as I mentioned with the soil, the soil is very important. And every time you grow something, they'll take some of the nutrients out. So you want to put those back in and a great way to do that is compost if you have the space. So you can do that in any, all sorts of different ways, but basically compost is just decomposed organic material. So it's, it's, um, you know, all your garden waste or your plant material that's just basically rotted back into soil. Very good for enriching your soil and you can do it uh, in a variety of different ways. And I'll touch on a couple in a moment, but the important thing is just to get started. 
So, you know, if you've just got some pallets, just make a couple of bays and just throw your stuff in there. Um, some tips to keep in mind is keep it moist. So compost will work a lot better if it's moist, um, sl even s more slightly wet than your soil for your veggies. So if you, with compost, you do want to, if you squeeze it, you want to see a couple of drops coming out of the, the compost material because they, the bacteria that um, break all the, the, the uh, organic matter down like it to be moist. Make the material as small as you can. If you can get a shredder or a mulcher, then that will help a lot. Otherwise you can just cut it up with your spade or secateurs or something and turn it regularly. So the more regularly you turn it, the better. If you can do it once a week, fantastic. If you can do it once a fortnight, that's good. Even if you did it once a month. Uh, but the more you turn it, the more the quicker it will work basically. And also have a, a mix of ingredients. So you don't wanna just have all food waste unless you're doing a worm farm or a compost tumbler or something. But if in this pile sort of method, you don't want to have just all food waste. You want to mix it with a variety of garden waste, um, or you don't want to just have all lawn clippings. You want to mix it with other kinds of garden waste and food and things like that too. If you want to get compost gear, the council has a program where we partner with this um, organization called Compost Revolution. So you can get half price composting gear. All these things are on the screen there. The tumblers, worm farms, compost bins, bakashi bins for half price. So you go to this website, compostrevolution.com.au slash Mount Gambia, and then you just choose what you want. Uh, you pay for it with your credit card and then it'll get delivered to your house within two to three weeks. So you can go on there, uh, great way to get your composting gear and you don't even have to leave home. If you're looking for a bit more information, then Gardening Australia is a good place to start. They've got the website there um, on the screen and they've got a great veggie guide, veggie guide there with different ways of growing veggies and lots of good advice. Uh, there's also, you know, they've obviously got a TV program that you can watch on TV or uh, on ABC iView at any time you like. And so they're very informative as well. They're great, great shows to watch and they've got lots of good information. So in summary, you know, choose a sunny spot four to six hours a day. Uh, Get some seedlings, or it can grow from seed obviously, but get some seedlings, put them in, uh, enrich the soil over time with compost and, you know, refer to the Mount Gambia planting calendar and just get started basically. So yeah, we're coming into a bit of a lean time for gardening, but you still can grow veggies. Um, if you eat salads, you can grow lettuce all year round, um, even carrots, things like that. So just get started. Um, so if you do have any questions, I encourage you to use the Q&A function and I'll do my best to, to um, answer them. But I've just got the links on there in case anyone's interested, you can copy them down or take a photo of something of the, the, the Mount Gambia planting calendar, also the compost revolution. And if you think of any other questions later on after the webinar is finished, you can always email me at city at mountgambia.sa.gov.au and I'll, I'll answer them after that. So I'll just, if anyone does have questions, use the Q&A. Um, I'll just see, what if you live in the District Council of Grant? If you live in a, another council, uh, you just have to see if they're signed up to the Compost Revolution or not. Uh, as far as I know, the District Council are not part of it, but you check with them. And if you live somewhere else, just check with your local council, but it is for Mount Gambia residents. Uh, any other questions? Just having a look. Oh, here's another one. So the question is, I really struggle with getting enough light on my property. What are good low light, high shade plants? So some things like lettuce, uh, even peas and that sort of thing um, are good for growing in the shade. And I'd recommend you Google it as well because there's others as well. Um, it depends how much light you're talking about, I guess. If you get a few hours of light, then you'll be fine. Um, where I've got my veggie garden, I do get sh shading from trees as well, and particularly this time of year, because they're quite tall gum trees nearby. Um, but the veggies still grow, they just might grow a bit slower. Uh, just having a look. Oh, okay. Um, do you need to separate the roots when planting seedlings? So if you, if you grow, um, from seed, uh, you might do it all in one tray rather than little compartments. Do you have to separate them? Generally, uh, depends with uh, growing from seed, you do need to thin out the, seed, the seeds as they grow into seedlings if you've got the spacings too close. So you'll have the recommendation on the back of the packet, uh, but if, they, if you've 
typically you would sow the seeds a bit thicker so that you've got more. You do have to thin them out. So if you're going to plant them uh, to meet those requirements of the spacing, then you do need to separate them. And if you just sort of grab them gently and you just sort of gently ease them away, then generally they'll, they will separate and you can separate them out. If, you know, if you had two lettuce plants together, it's probably not the end of the world. Uh, but if you had five all together, you would want to separate them and plant them a bit further apart. Um, should mint leaves turn yellow? Uh, they can in winter. It just depends. Um, it depends if you've got all, all yellow leaves and there's probably something a bit wrong there. Um, maybe they need a bit of uh, nutrients, a bit of liquid fertilizer or something like that. Is boar water okay to water veggies? Yep, yep, definitely. You can use boar water to water veggies. I do at home too. Um, where I am, there's iron in the water. So if I leave left the sprinkler on, then everything will go orange. But as long as I don't leave it on too long, that's perfectly fine. Uh, having said that, you probably do need to check your boar water to make sure it's not too salty. Um, that can be the problem with boar water. And you can easily get a kind of a salinity, cheap salinity tester to test for that. Uh, but generally the boar water around this region is, is okay. How often do you liquid fertilize? Week, fortnightly, uh, weekly, fortnightly or monthly? Well, I just do it whenever I can, but um, it's good to do it. Uh, to, in summer, you do it kind of in spring, do it weekly. Uh, this time of year, you could do it fortnightly. But it's definitely a great thing to do because it does gives the plants the nutrients, also gives microbes too. So if you've got liquid fertilizer from a worm farm or something, it puts those microbes into the soil as well. Uh, I've got another question here. Do you only plant one seed in the ground? Uh, you get so many in packet. Yeah, well, one thing I would recommend is if, when you're thinking about what you want to have in your veggie garden, then plant three times as much because Typically, you know, if you're going from seed, some might not work. Uh, as I say, if, if you've sown them thick, then you need to thin them out. And also you do get pests and things as well. So plant three times as much as you think you're gonna need. And then if it all works out, great. You can swap it with your, your neighbors, uh, your friends and family, give it away, or depending on what it is, you can preserve it as well. But I'd definitely recommend you put in more than you think you're gonna need. So if you think you only need two or three lettuce plants then put in at least six, nine, 10, uh, just to make sure. Uh, why would lettuce taste bitter even though it looks great? Well, it depends on the variety. Um, if it hasn't had enough water while it's been growing, sometimes this time of year we can get, uh, we get little bits of rain, but as I mentioned, if you actually scratched away the, the surface soil, you'll see that underneath it's dry. So it's good to just do that just to see and um, if we haven't been getting enough rain, then just give your veggies a good water at least once a week this time of year. Another question, do you put drain holes in plastic bottle plant containers to grow seedlings? Yeah, you definitely need to have holes uh, so that the water can get out because uh, most veggies don't like to be waterlogged. They like it the damp, but not waterlogged. What I do though, is instead of putting it on the very bottom of the container, the plastic container, the bottle or whatever it is, I actually put it just a little bit up from the bottom. And what that does is it keeps just a little bit of moisture in the bottom, and then that can help keep the soil moist. So that is what they call a wicking pot or a wicking bed. You actually have the hole a third of the way from the bottom, not all the way at the bottom. And then it just keeps some of the moisture in there, the water in there. And it's a fantastic way of growing veggies. Last summer when we had that 45, 46 degree day, uh, I was at work and I, I got home and you know, most of my plants were dead because we've got bore water and the, because of the iron in the water, you can't use automatic watering systems because they just clog up with the iron. You just have to do it by hand or by sprinkler when you're there. And I've got some wicking beds, um, wicking pots, and the, the veggies that were in the wicking beds look like they were almost unaffected. I was, I was very surprised. I mean, I had good success with wicking beds over the years, but I thought 45 degrees, hot northerly wind, they're not gonna stand a chance either but they almost looked unaffected. So wicking beds, wicking pots, fantastic way to garden. So I definitely recommend that you put the hole, not right at the bottom, but just a little bit up from the bottom. Uh, will the presentation be emailed to participants? Uh, I am recording it, so uh, we could put a link somewhere, I think. I'll have to ask the people at the library how, we, how they go about that, but um, we are recording the webinar, so I'm sure we can put it on somewhere and email the link to people. And yeah.
if there's no other questions, as I mentioned, if you do have any later on, you can always email me at city at mountgambia.sa.gov.au. But thank you very much for joining me tonight. I hope you learned something. And I just very just highly encourage you to get out there in the garden and, and put some veggies in, look at the planting guide and have it a crack. And I've just got one last question actually. With the planting guide, how do you work out the season for you in winter, the greenhouse? The seasons are the same uh, because a lot of the seasons they go, it does go by temperature, but also by the amount of light as well. You just sort of extend it a bit. So say tomatoes, you can just basically bring it forward a month. So, um, you know, you could start growing tomatoes a month earlier than you would. But in future versions of the, um, the planting guide, when you update it, we'll probably have a section on there for greenhouses. So can you grow something under glass? And, you know, how does that extend the season out? So hopefully uh, in sometimes in the future, we'll, we'll uh, edit that planting guide and cater for greenhouses as well. So thank you very much everyone for attending. And uh, yeah, if you do have any other ideas for webinars on home food production, then let me know. I could also do one on uh, waste and recycling. So I do a lot of work in waste and recycling and people often have a lot of questions like, you know, do I keep the lids on my bottles? If, if so, um, if I have to take them off, what do I do with them? Can I recycle polystyrene, you know, all sorts of things. So there tends to be a bit of confusion in the community about that. I can do something on that as well, but also on, on uh, home food production. So if you have any ideas, then email it through. But uh, thank you for joining me and have a good evening.